All right, welcome back, everybody. This is part nine of the um, Bezier Graphs series. Wanted to talk a little bit about um, hierarchical uh, procedural runtime generation of the graphs rather than uh, pre-computing it uh, and some of the considerations of going one direction or another. Uh, so far, we have been pre-computing everything, which has a lot of advantages, but it also has some disadvantages too. So one of those is that uh, if you're pre-computing all of the positions that this grass is spawning in, uh, it's not going to work with procedural landscapes, right? So if your landscape changes in runtime, uh, your PCG volume isn't going to account for that if you're pre-computing everything. Um, so that could be a problem. Another potential issue uh, could be memory, uh, depending on the size of your project. If you're doing like a really large open world, uh, if you're saving the position of every single blade of grass or every several blades of grass, however you're deciding to structure your um, your asset, that's going to be a lot of points of data, uh, and you know that's going to have to be loaded in when that PCG volume is loaded into the level. Uh, so, you know that's a consideration: longer load times, higher memory consumption. Uh, but the advantages are that we have pre-computed all of the data that we need, which can allow the actual shader to run faster, right? So we talked about how can we pre-compute our uh, normals for blending? How can we pre-compute uh, random hash values? All of these different things can be uh, pre-computed and you can make some pretty complicated and interesting graphs using all of the systems uh, of PCG and have that done in advance so that um, you know that doesn't need to be done in the shader in real time. However, um, you know each of these is going to have a memory cost. So uh, PCG does allow for hierarchical uh, runtime generation, which is what I have set up here, where basically um, PCG will be set up into a grid. So if you look at our PCG world actor here, you see there's partition grid size, um, use 2D grid, uh, treat editor as generation source needs to be active. Um, and then there should be another setting. Let's see, where is it? Generate at runtime under the actual PCG volume itself. So you can see generation trigger rather than generation on load, on demand, generation on runtime. Um, and so this will allow the PCG volume to uh, generate the graphs at runtime. Uh, but we need to do some more in PCG to actually accommodate that. So if we hop over to our PCG, I've got a second graph set up. This one looks a little different than the first uh, because I have moved a lot of the logic to a subgraph. So that subgraph is right here. And this has all of the logic that we were using before, but you'll notice that I've disabled a lot of it for this. And then uh, that subgraph is, um, you, you know, doing all the math or could potentially do all the math that we were doing before. You'll see there's this grid size node. So I've got a grid size of 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. So just like before, I'm spawning four sets of graphs out to different distances. If we look at our PCG volume here, we have this uh, runtime generation radii. And I've got these set to um, the various radii that the uh, culling happens at, right? So 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 1,000, uh, 10,000. Uh, and the, um, basically the surface sampler that's creating these points is going to do so in a grid of this size. So we're gonna say, all right, well, in this case, 37.5 points per square meter will be created in grids 400 units uh, in size. And those 400 unit size grids will be generated out 4,000 units from the camera. And then we repeat that process for 800, 1600, 3200. And the advantage of this is that we're rather than sampling the landscape for the entire surface all at once, we can say, all right, well, let's only sample the landscape in the area that we're actually planning on drawing the grass. And then as we get farther out, we can sample the, the landscape and generate less, uh, few, generate fewer points, essentially. Then on those points, 
we run our subgraph, and uh, then finally, then we spawn our meshes. Uh, so uh, now there might be more optimized ways of doing this. I'm still not, you know, an expert on PCG by any means. Um, you know, it's still new to all of us. But um, what I am finding is that when you are doing runtime generation, because all of this is being generated on the CPU on the fly, you need to be a lot more sensitive about how much logic you're putting in the PCG graph when you're spawning large numbers of assets. So you, for one, you need to be much more sensitive about how many points you're actually spawning. In this case, just for the sake of example, I'm trying to keep it fairly consistent with the other examples. So there's a very similar amount of grass blades on this um, as there was in the uh, pre-generated grass. But in reality, you'd probably want to be a lot more conservative and spawn a lot fewer instances. But in any case, I'll leave you know optimization up to you on that regard, uh, what makes sense for your project. But in any case, um, the main thing I've found is that it probably makes sense to defer a lot of the logic that we were taking advantage of pre-computation on to other things. So for example, in the previous video, we talked about how to avoid using runtime virtual textures for the normal blending. And for pre-computed grass, that makes sense, right? Because we can do that math in advance and then just simply have our shader run that and get that result. Um, but in the case of runtime generated grass, that probably doesn't make sense anymore because then we are having our CPU perform um, math that would be better performed on the GPU, right? If we're doing it in real time, we'd rather have these operations done on the GPU um, or just simply read a texture that can have that information again done on the GPU. So, you know, if you are going to be using runtime grass, you'd probably want to use runtime virtual textures to um, to do that, right? And so for this example here, I've disabled um, the rotation roll and pitch calculations that were being done because that would slow down the generation quite a lot. Um, I'm also disabling the uh, collision detection that it gets rid of clipping on meshes, right? So that would probably be better done. Once again, with virtual textures, you could have uh, objects right to a mask and offset the grass um, or, you know, or shrink the grass mesh or whatever, get rid of it where it's overlapping with certain objects that you want to draw into the virtual texture. So there are other ways of doing this stuff on the GPU that, um, you know, I would avoid if you're pre-computing grass for your project, but you probably should utilize if you are doing runtime computation of your grass. So in any case, um, once we have our points, we run whatever math we wanna do. In this case, really, I'm just creating the noise attributes that we're using for our wind. That's the only thing that I'm keeping here, but in theory, you could even get rid of that. And then again, use um, some sort of random hash value generated in the, in the material if you wanted. Um, go with a more conventional method. Uh, and then finally, the mesh is being spawned. And there's not really any major difference between the mesh being spawned here and in the past. The reason we're getting a warning here is because I've disabled all of those attributes. It'll still work just fine. Um, so there's that. Uh, but let's go ahead and launch this. Let's save that. And what you'll see is another, um, you could call it disadvantage of runtime generation right out the gate. So if we pop this open, all right, you'll see as you watch this screen, um, you can actually see the grass pop in. Hopefully you can notice that. So as the, the game loads, the grass is being loaded in chunks because I'm doing four separate operations, right? I'm doing this. Uh, first operation that's very large and sparse, and then these finer operations where we get the, the near grass, and then only after all four of those operations are done do we get our fully dense grass. So let's go ahead and throw on stat FPS. So you can see right now with um, this, I'm getting 80 frames per second, although this is at uh, non-native, so let's go to screen percentage, and I'm gonna go up to 100% resolution scale. So this will drop my performance quite a lot. So you can see I'm getting about uh, 55 FPS right now. Um, this is rendered at um, uh, 
nearly 4K. Uh, this is an ultra wide monitor, so it's just uh, slightly less than 4K. Um, and yeah, so what you'll find here with runtime generation is that as I move the camera around, you probably just saw it right there, there was a just a dip in the frame rate. Try to move around again. And right now it's running pretty good and I'm moving fairly quickly. I'm getting about 40 FPS. But every once in a while, uh, you'll hit a section where if you move around too fast, uh, a bunch will need to be generated all at once. This is actually working pretty well. But here we go. You can actually see the grids because I move too quickly. There we go. We're getting a little bit of stutter in this direction, dropping down into the 30 frames per second. This is the edge of the volume right there, which is why we're seeing cut off. So I don't have this covering the entire landscape, but theoretically I could. There we go. There's a big drop. But basically, you know, if something's in, in your radius, it needs to be generated in real time. And that generation process can cause a spike on the CPU and the more points you're spawning and the, um, the more math you're doing before, you know, spawning, uh, the more expensive that's going to be. So you'll need to tailor it to your project. Um, you can also see that I applied the normal mapping effect I described in the distance where there's a bit of a normal map, uh, being applied on the actual flat grass in the distance. Uh, in this case, I just, um, used a pretty lazy technique. Um, we'll just quickly detour and mention that. Um, so basically taking the same wind system inside the grass material, and you can see that generating grids now. And in this case, I'm just using a water normal map just because I wanted to use content that was just in the engine and not create anything from scratch for the sake of example. But you'd probably want to make sure that you're using a normal match that matches the wave frequency that you're using for, you know, like the using this generate, for example, a normal map from the height map that you're using for your waves, right? Or something like that. But in any case, I'm applying just the same exact wind system. Um, so you, you know, you just sample the wind system in your grass material or your, your landscape material as well. And just like before, I'm using three textures panned in different speeds and directions, um, which is again, probably overkill but um, why not then blending those normals together and then I'm flattening them a lot because otherwise this, uh, this effect is quite strong. And then I'm using a distance-based lerp to blend between um, the actual normal of the grass to uh, this wave effect in the distance. And that's just going into the normal map of the landscape material. So. Nothing fancy there. Uh, so now let's go ahead and go into our subgraph here and I'm going to turn on all of this extra logic. And then let's uh, relaunch our level. I wanna see how much worse our performance is, if it's noticeable. Wait here. Okay, everything's generating. Once it's done generating, my frame rate should jump up. All right, there it hit. So now we're in the 80s, so it's done generating. Let's go ahead and bring up my screen percentage back in our mid 50s. Then I'm going to go ahead and fly around. There's our first dip into the 20s, dip into the 20s. You can see that it was much easier for me to catch up to an ungenerated area. Now we're getting in 20s and 40s. We were able to 
find areas with incomplete generation. So, as you can see, performance is a little worse. Uh, not great because of this extra logic. PCG is having a harder time generating our tiles fast enough to meet the demand. Now, after they're generated, they actually get cached. Uh, so, if you go back into an area that you've been recently, as long as you don't go past a certain radius, which you can define, uh, the previously generated points will actually stay in memory. So uh, that's helpful, but you know there's still going to be a limit and clear things out. So you can see that's not working nearly as well because of all that extra logic. So this is something you need to be sensitive to when you're um, deciding how to structure things. Um, and you can, again, solve that in a handful of different ways, generating fewer points, um, doing less math on those points, all of that's going to be helpful. But it is kind of a shame that we can't, um, you know, really utilize PCG to its fullest when we're spawning this many instances of grass. Um, at least I'm not aware of a way, right? There might be uh, ways to optimize this, optimize this further. So if you guys have suggestions on how to make runtime generation even faster, Definitely throw them into the comments. Um, there's lots of things that I think would be helpful. Like for example, um, rather than spawning a single blade of grass, uh, probably spawn clusters, clumps of grass uh, with this system would be more efficient. So that way you can have denser grass with, um, with fewer points, things like that. Um, so, you know, there's definitely ways to make it work. Uh, and as you can see, you can get pretty good results with it. Uh, if, you know, that's the direction you want to go. It just really is going to depend on your project and what you're trying to accomplish. So, yeah, that's, I think, really all I wanted to talk about in this one. So, um, still not sure how much longer the series is going to go, but, uh, you know, if there's enough interest or questions out there, we'll see if there's anything else worth talking about. Uh, thanks again for watching and see you all next time.